All right, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be updating a very, very cool budget deck. Uh, it's actually a very, very strong deck. I, I would argue one of the best going first decks that there ever was or that there ever is. It's actually Counter Fairies. I'm very excited to show it because there is new support. We've got a new Parashath monster. There's a new option to go into out of our uh, Counter Trap. We've also got the Herald of Mirage Light and the Condemned Dark Lord. These are three fairy uh, monsters. This is a link two. This is a link two. This is a link three, but you're never going to actually use it for, you know, from its, like, as a link three, you're just going to summon off the counter trap. Although you could summon it uh, like, like a link three, but they're all, they all have their own uses for the deck. Unfortunately, I only pulled one of this and one of this. So if I could, I would just run three of him. But I'll show you, you know, different ways that you can run all three of these cards. But let's get started with the deck profile. We've got to start off one copy of the boss monster, which is the sacred um, air knight. Uh, he's a he's a pretty good boss monster. You can summon him a lot easier now with the condemned uh, Parshath, with the celestial Parshath monster, because you can banish cards out of the graveyard to summon him. Uh, same thing with the dark lord. You can banish monsters out of the graveyard instead of having a tribute summon. On top of that, he's already pretty easy to summon because you can summon him off the counter trap, or you can summon him through uh, just any when you activate a counter trap. Uh, you can special summon him, which is pretty good when he inflicts battle damage. You can get a counter trap. He, he's actually really good for the deck. Some people have cut him completely, but I think he's just he's too good. He, he's your only real like strong boss monster, so you need to keep him. Play one copy of Zeradius. Uh, this is just to search the uh, just to search the sanctuary in the sky, but. He's also a monster. One Barrier of the Heavens. We play three copies of Bountiful Artemis. Every time a Count Trap is activated, you draw a card. Total Goat. You got three copies of Gliding Ariadne. Uh, this card's pretty busted, too. Insane support for, it, for this deck. Obviously, it's already been out, but this card's really, really good because, number one, if you have it, like, you activate in your Pendulum Zone, you don't have to pay cost anymore. You have to discard or like pay life points for any of your counter traps. That's already amazing. And then on top of that, if your opponent goes, all right, we can't let that happen, and they twin twister it, uh, it, it when it gets destroyed by card effect, you can reveal three counter traps and then add one to your hand. So either way, you're going to go plus. Uh, it's really good for that reason. We play one copy of Honest. Uh, there's multiple ways to get this back to your hand. You don't have to play more than one. But this is your main card to get over huge boss monsters. Play one copy of Minerva, Scholar of the Sky. Basically, every time a counter trap is activated, this thing gains uh, 500 attack. And then on top of that, you can get a counter trap from the graveyard. It lets you keep looping things. One Power Angel, Valkyria. Uh, this card basically lets you search a, a uh, what's it called? A fairy monster every time an effect is negated. And we've got the Sage of the Sky. This gains, when every time a, an effect is negated, you can gain 1,000 life points and then destroy an opponent's card, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So that is all of the monsters. As you can see, all of them are level 4s, except for the uh, the goat, the boss monster. Everything else is a level 4, so we can. it works very well with our next card, which is Ties of the Brethren. You play 3 copies of this. This card's really good. You pay 2,000 life points, and then you target a monster on your side of the field. We'll say uh, Matiel. And uh, basically, you pay 2,000 life points, and then you can summon a monster with the exact same level, attribute, and uh, type. So you can summon, for example, a Power Angel, and what would be a good one? A really cool combo is to get an Honest. So you summon these three, and then you activate Honest's, Honest's effect to return it back to your hand. And now these two are basically invincible, because if they attack, you can activate Honest and then gain attack. So it's really cool for that. So we play three copies of that for sure. This is one of the best. You always want to see this in your opening hand. Play one copy of Sanctuary in the Sky. This card's not the best, but it helps some of your effects just constantly activate. Some of the effects in the deck actually require this. Other uh, cards, like for example the Parashath, uh, benefits from having that on the field because you get additional effects. Additionally, it's, it's it actually does work sometimes because you don't take any battle damage when fairy when a fairy battles. So in some ways, it's pretty good. Uh, three sanctums of the Parashath. This basically also counts as a um, where's that card? The sanctuary in the sky. Uh, this also counts as sanctuary in the sky while it's on the field. But the benefit about this is it protects your back row on top of protecting your back row. Uh, it 
uh, gains uh, all of your fairies gain 300 attack and on top of that you can target three fairies or traps counter traps in your graveyard and then place them on the top of your deck in any order so it lets you keep relooping you never deck out if you're ever playing against like mystic mind and they don't have any burn cards that's trying to deck you out well they're never going to deck you out because you just put stuff back uh, we play three copies of pot of extravagance this is the draw spell that i personally like you can play pot of uh desires you can play I forget the, the, the fairy name, but like uh, something in the sky, you can play that. Uh, you can also play, uh, what's another decent one? I, not really card demise because it's at one. And by the way, you can actually add a card demise to this deck since it is at one. It's not that big of a deal if you see it. Uh, but yeah, I would say those, the, I think Pot of Extravagance is probably the best for this particular purpose. Uh, next we've got the counter traps, the most important part of the deck. Three warnings, fresh off the ban list, two ban lists to go, I think. Uh, but yeah, three warnings, three judgment, and three strikes. Best counter traps of all time uh, because they're very generic. But yeah, definitely those. And you know what? If you have Gliding Ariadne, you don't have to pay any cost. Uh, then we play two copies of Divine Punishment. Uh, this one basically is another form of Solemn Judgment. Uh, as long as you, well not really Solemn Judgment, it negates a monster effect, trap effect, or spell effect, it doesn't negate a summon, but basically it's free as long as you have the Sanctuary in the Sky on the field. Uh, next, one of my favorite counter traps, the Rebirth of Parashath. Uh, this card is extremely good because uh, when a spell and trap card uh, is or monster effect is activated, you can basically reveal a counter trap, pay a thousand life points, and then you get to, oh yeah, discard a card, which um, some of those costs you can avoid. You can't avoid the uh, revealing the counter trap, but you can avoid the other two costs with Gliding Ariadne. And then basically you negate the activation of whatever your opponent activated, and then shuffle it back into the deck, which is insane, uh, because like you don't get additional effects. And on top of shuffling it back into the deck, you then get to special summon a Parashath monster from either your deck or... Uh, your extra deck, which you can summon like Celestial Knight Parashath. Uh, this is the new one, or you can summon the Avenging Knight Parashath, or you can summon that main deck one that uh, I showed you previously, the first card I showed you. Uh, but you can summon uh, all, any three, any one of those just by doing those few costs. Next, we've got two copies of Ultimate Providence. Uh, this one, if your opponent activates monster spells or traps, you can respond by. Uh, revealing in your hand a monster spell and trap and basically negating the activation um, not just revealing but discarding the exact same type of card and and uh, negating the activation but again if you have gliding area on it doesn't matter it's free and then we've got last card drastic drop off this card's actually grown on to me uh, when when you know, when I first picked up this deck I didn't like drastic drop off but I actually think it's really really good against cards like twin twisters and mystical space typhoon because, like, let's say they draw it, they draw it for turn. You can chain this card, and then they can't respond because they can't respond uh, to, like, let's say if they, they draw twin twisters. You activate this card; they can't respond because this is a counter trap. That's a spell, uh, speed spell two. This is speed spell three. They can't respond, so it's really good for that purpose. And then on top of that, I think this is probably the card that you want to see in the grind game most, uh, because. If they're really, really low on cards in hand, cards on field, and then they're about to draw for a turn, you screw them over with this. And then whatever they would have drawn, even even if it could have possibly gotten over your board, it just kind of ruins everything for them. But yeah, I've actually, the card's really grown on me. And it has no cost, really. It's just kind of free. Uh, now let's move on to the extra deck. Uh, kind of the new new part of this. Play one Avenging Knight Parashath. This card basically is one of the cards you can summon for free. It changes the monster your opponent controls to defense, and then it does piercing, uh, which is pretty cool. One Celestial Knight Parashath. Uh, this card uh, basically lets you uh, just uh, discard a card and then add Sanctuary in the Sky. And if you have Sanctuary in the Sky, you can actually add a monster. And you can also add a card that lists Sanctuary in the Sky, so you can add the... Uh, the divine it was a divine punishment to your hand, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but it's all overall pretty good. It can also let you add the um, uh, the spell card, the uh, sanctum of Parashath to your hand. So you can add any of those cards by discarding one card, which is already pretty decent. And then on top of that, it lets you when a monster, uh, a fairy monster leaves the field, you can also banish a monster out of the graveyard and special summon a monster with higher. Uh, levels than that monster which is just another free way to 
special summon the uh, sacred arch air knight parashath. Uh, so yeah, it's beneficial for that. One herald of mirage light. This card basically it's just any two fairies, and then if your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can negate the activation by discarding a fairy monster from your hand. It's like a little mini herald of perfection. And then we've got the bottom effects are just uh, it's kind of like for ritual decks. It's not relevant here, but it is good, but it's not relevant here. We've got Condemned Dark Lord. This card, the only effect that's relevant on this card for this deck is that you can banish monsters out of the grave. Like, you can banish two monsters out of the graveyard to special summon sacred uh, Air Knight Parashath uh, from your hand. You can basically banish two fairies instead of having to tribute summon, which is pretty decent. You could also, if you wanted to, play a, uh, Arch Lord Christie in this deck. It's a lot easier to summon now, but again, it's, it's really up to you. Now, for the utility monsters, we play a Boralod, a... Nightmare Cerberus, a Phoenix, and then all the rest of the Super Poly targets. We've got any dark deck. We've got zombies. We've got any dark deck that's better than the last dark deck. Thunder Dragons, because they, they still kind of linger around. Mud Dragon, this one just catches your opponent off guard. Sometimes they're not ready for it, but you just get them with this one. That's all. And the Diplex or Chimeras for. Mostly Salamangrates, and then we've got the Borlode Furious, Fur Furious Dragon uh, because it, it completely wrecks our boys, the uh, the Rocket deck. Uh, but that is basically a lot of lot of awesome cards uh, to play with. These are all Super Poly targets, so obviously you are playing Super Poly in the side deck, although I don't really reveal side decks for like uh, just basic deck profiles. But yeah, if you enjoy this video, drop a like, and thank you for watching.